الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن نبينا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد عباد الله والمسلمون اتقوا الله سبحانه وتعالى حق التقوى واعلموا أن النجاة والفلاح في تقوى الله سبحانه وتعالى والمسلمس fulfill the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by adhering to his commands and the commands of our noble messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the best of your ability and by refraining and staying away from sins and disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and disobedience to the commands of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in doing that that's the path that leads to success Yet, remember, we're human beings, we're not perfect, we do wrong ourselves, we do transgress the boundaries and the limits of Allah, and we have ups and downs. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from His mercy, has opened the door of tawbah. There is a tawbah, rahman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for those who want to rectify their affairs, to get rid of their sins, to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and to make you turn from disobedience to obedience from the path of destruction to the path of success. That's why today, inshallah ta'ala, another reminder about the tawbah. A tawbah to Adam al-Qunur bin rahmatillah. That we should repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala often and constantly and never ever despair of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibad Allah. Kama ta'lamuna inna ibn Adam al-makhluqun da'if. As you know, we as a human being were very weak. وَقَدْ حَفَّ بِي أَعْدَاءٌ كَثِيرُونَ مِنْ شَيَاطِينِ الْجِنِّ وَالْإِنْسِ يُحَسِّنُونَ لَهُ الْقَبِيحَ وَيُقَبِّحُونَ فِي نَظَرِهِ الْحَسَنِ Just not only that we are weak, but we are surrounded in this dunya, and that's the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that's how Allah made this dunya as a test and trial. With our weakness, still we are surrounded by many enemies, shayateen, the devils, among the jinn and the human being. Their main goal is to purify to you all what is ugly and repulsive. Anything that is ugly, zina is ugly. Shaitan make it beautiful. Alcohol is ugly. Shaitan make it beautiful. Riba and usury is ugly. Shaitan find a way, shayateen, not just one, to make it look good and attractive. Likewise, anything that is good in this deen of Allah, shayateen will present it to the people in the most ugliest form of reality. So the people can stay away from it. Around with these foreign enemies, the shayateen of the jinn and the human being, now he has another enemy within himself, his soul, that call him to fall into haram. فَهَذَا الْمَخْلُوقُ الْدَعِيفِ مُعَرَّضُ لِلْخَطَرِ مِنْ قُلْجَانِ This weak creature, which is the, the Bani Adam, the son of Adam, the human being, as you see, they surrounded. They surrounded with danger from all directions. لَكِنْ مَعَ هَذَا كُلِّهِ قَدْ جَعَلَ اللَّهُ لَهُ حِسْنًا حِسْنًا حَصِينًا Yet, with that, from the mercy of Allah, Allah has made a fortress for this servant. إِذَا أَوَى إِلَيْهِ رَجَعَتْ هَذِهِ الْأَعْدَاءُ كُلُّهَا حَاسِئَةً مَلْحُورًا But just not look at the fortress, but you have to make it to it. If you seek shelter in that fortress and make your way into it, you'd be okay by Allah's permission, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And all those devils and those evil people, they will be ousted, driven away and expelled in disgrace and humiliation. This fortress is going to help protect us against the shayateen, against the lust and desires and temptations and the trials. 
is tawbah that we have to turn to Allah constantly with repentance and asking Allah for forgiveness and seeking Allah's help and aid. قال الله تعالى كما في سورة الحج واعتصموا بالله هو مولاكم فنعم المولى ونعم النصير Ayah 78 of Surah Al-Hajj and hold fast to Allah meaning have confidence in Allah depend upon Him in all of your affairs this is not something that you're going to do by yourself depend on Allah in each and everything you do He is your Mawla your Lord and what an excellent Mawla and what an excellent helper he is indeed. فَمَنْ بَدَرَتْ مِنْهُ خَطِيئَةً وَارْتَكَبَ مَعْصِيَةً فَبَادَرَ بِالتَّوْبَةِ وَالْإِسْتِغْفَارِ وَأَتْبَعَهَا الْحَسَنَةَ الَّذِي تَنْحُوهَا كَفَّرَهَا اللَّهُ عَنْهُ وَقَعُوا خَطَرَهَا So therefore anyone who, when we, we wrong ourselves, and we do wrong ourselves, we're not perfect, we're not angels. When we commit a sin, and rush immediately to Tawbah, to ask Allah for forgiveness, and to repent and we follow that evil deed with the good one, Allah will experience for you and wipe it out <coughs> and you don't have to worry about its danger. Qala ta'ala fi surat al-Nisa وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ سُوءًا أَوْ يَظْلِمْ نَفْسَهُ ثُمَّ يَسْتَغْفِرِ اللَّهَ يَجِدِ اللَّهَ رَفُورًا رَحِيمًا Ayah 110 of surat al-Nisa And whoever does evil or wrong himself but afterwards seeks Allah's forgiveness, Allah will he will find Allah out forgiving, most merciful. يقول الشيخ فوزان حبيب الله إن التوبة الصادقة تمحو الخطيئة مهما عظمت كما قال تعالى في سورة الأنفال قل للذين كفروا إن ينتهوا يعني الشرك وعن الكفر يغفر لهم ما قد سلف توبة but it's truthful one not just by lips truthful repentance that have fulfilled its conditions would wipe out the sin. Doesn't matter how great the sin may be. As Allah says in Ayah 38 of Surah Al-Anfal, say, O Muhammad وسلم, to those who have disbelieved and commit polytheism, which is the greatest of all prohibition, the greatest sins, kufr and shirk, but tell them still yet, if they cease but in this life, from disbelief, their past will be forgiven, Allah Akbar. al Sheikh Fawzan Habibullah, لقد عرض الله التوبة على الذين هم أشد الناس جرما الذين يقتلون أنبياءه ويقولون إن الله ثالث ثلاثة ويقولون إن الله هو المسيح ابن مريم الله سبحانه وتعالى in his book in the Quran has invited and kept the doors of Toba open even for those people who committed the greatest and most heinous of crimes shirk and with that they killed the prophets those who they say Allah is one of the three, those who believe in the Trinity. Those who they say Allah is the Messiah, Isa, the son of Mary. لَقَدْ دَعَ اللَّهُ هَؤُلَاءِ إِلَى التَّوْبَةِ فَقَالَ سُبْحَانَهُ كَمَا فِي سُورَةِ الْمَائِدَةِ أَفَلَا يَتُوبُونَ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَيَسْتَغْفِرُونَهُ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ These people who ascribe partners to Allah, those who ascribe offspring to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, still Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala address them by saying, will they not turn with repentance to Allah and ask His forgiveness, for Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. عِبَرَ اللَّهُ يَتَلَطَّفُ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَلَى بِعِبَادِهِ الَّذِينَ كَثُرَتْ سَيِّئَاتُهُمْ وَعَظُمَتْ خَطَيَاهُمْ فَيَنْهَاهُمْ عَنْ أَنْ تَحْبِلَهُمْ كَثْرَةَ ذُنُوبِهِمْ عَلَى الْقُنُوتِ مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ وَتَرْكَةِ التَّوْبَةِ kind and gentle of expressions and address when he addressed his servants slaves that they have wronged themselves with many sins subhanAllah they have so many sins yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbade them from despairing from his mercy yet even if a person have committed the greater sins wrong himself so many ways then they should never ever leave off tawbah they should always turn to Allah and ask Allah for forgiveness. قال الله تعالى في سورة الزمر قل يا عبادي الذين أسرفوا على أنفسهم لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله إن الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا لماذا؟ إنه هو الغفور الرحيم وأنيبوا إلى ربكم وأسلموا له من قبل أن يأتيكم العذاب ثم لا تنصرون Say, O my slaves who have transgressed against themselves by committing 
evil deeds and all sins. This spare not of the mercy of Allah. This spare not. Let nobody tell you you're done. After all of this, now you want to come to the masjid and you want to pray. Yes, you can come to the masjid and pray. Yes, you can change your affairs. Because Allah says, do not despair of the mercy of Allah. Verily Allah forgive all sins because of His names. For His beautiful name that He is al ghafur Al-Rahim, the oft forgiving, the most merciful. And turn in repentance and in obedience with true faith of an Islamic martyrism away from shirk to your Lord and submit to him in Islam by, by accepting, by, by, by uh, implementing the teachings of Islam before the torment comes upon you and then you will not be helped. Doesn't matter how great the sin may be, Remember, Allah's forgiveness is greater. Doesn't matter how great the sin. If you are doing something or somebody you know is struggling with something, and he may say, this is big, man. I don't know if I can come out of this. I don't know if, if I'm going to make it to the Jannah. I'm struggling. Tell him, listen. Doesn't matter how great the sin, because Allah's pardon and forgiveness is greater than that. And from the qualities and the traits of the believer, he or she, that they never, ever despair of the mercy of Allah. Never let the shaitan put you in that corner. You're done. You got no way out. There is always way out. There is always way out. As long as you're breathing, as long as you're alive, you can always make that necessary. You turn from disobedience to obedience. <clears throat> فلا تقنط لأن القنوط من رحمة الله من أعظم كبائر الذنوب قال تعالى في سورة يوسف إنه لا يأس من روح الله إلا القوم الكافرون Never despair of Allah and never tell someone that there is no way out for them because despairing of the mercy of Allah is concerned one of the great sins as it came in سورة يوسف آية 87 Certainly no one despairs of the mercy of Allah except the people who disbelieve for the other Allah ولكن يقول الشيخ الفوزان حفظه الله ليس معنى هذا أن يعتمد العبد على ساعة عفو الله ورحمته ويتمادى في المعاصي والذنوب وينسى العقوب المترتب على المعاصي بعض الناس لا يصلي ولا يزكي ويقترب محرمات وإذا نبيه أكي الله غفور رحيم غفور رحيم أنتم متشددون الله غفور رحيم That's why the Sheikh Fawzan, after he brings this ayah, he says, the meaning of this ayah, it doesn't mean that a person will continue upon evil, upon transgression, upon persisting upon sins, and committing sins, and then says, Allah, Allah, Rahim. Like certain people. They don't pray, they commit all types of sins, and when you tell them, you want good for them, they're like, Ahi, take it easy, take it easy, Allah, Rahim. Rahim. And they forget that Allah is severe in punishment. فيجب على العبد أن يعترف بذنبه ويطلب من ربه مغفرته ويبادر بالتوبة منه. Anyone who wants good for himself for real should recognize his own problems. You gotta recognize the problems, man. A part of fixing a problem, you should know what it is and recognize that there is a problem. And then, if you have a mechanical problem in your car, you have a leak in your house or whatever in your business, you go to the right people. You have a toothache, you go to the dentist. You have electrical problem, you don't go to the dentist, you go to an electrician. Likewise, here we go, you have sins, we're not like the Christians, they go to the priest and they expose themselves. Now you turn to Allah, just be true on your Lord, and ask for forgiveness. قال الله تعالى في سورة آل عمران, آية 135, وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا فَعَلُوا فَاحِشَةً أَوْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ ذَكَرُوا اللَّهَ كَثِيرٌ ذَكَرُوا اللَّهَ فَاسْتَغْفَرُوا لِذُنُوبِهِمْ وَمَنْ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَلَمْ يُسِرُّوا عَلَى مَا فَعَلُوا وَهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ And those who, when they have committed fahisha, look, Allah didn't say those who do not commit fahisha. Allah is not saying those who do not commit sin, those who do not wrong themselves. Allah knows that we are going to commit sins. And those who, when they have committed fahisha, great sins, such as illegal sexual intercourse, zina and the like, or wrong themselves with a lot of evil, what they do? They remember Allah. 
and ask for forgiveness for their sins. And none can forgive sins but Allah and do not persist in what wrong they have done while they know. Ribadullah. يجب علينا أن نبادر بالتوبة فإننا لا ندري متى يحضر الأجل فيحال بيننا وبين التوبة وتفوتون الفرصة ولم يبقى لنا إلا الندم حين لا ينفع الندم لم يبقى لنا إلا الندم حين لا ينفع الندم لا يبقى لنا إلا الندم لا يبقى لنا إلا الندم إن شاء الله كان بجد وإن يبقى حج إن شاء الله مبرور أنا لا أعرف أن يبقى لنا إلا الندم لا يبقى لنا إلا الندم حج مبرور حج مبرور بأي دواية certain conditions, okay? This is not the time to mention them. It is incumbent upon us as Muslims to repent in every moment of our lives because we don't know when death is going to come upon us. Because you are not going to make Tawbah at the moment of death. You're just not. And you're not going to repent in the grave and most definitely you're not going to repent when you stand in front of Allah on Yom al So you're still alive, that's a great miracle from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're still alive, it's a great Blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Repent today before tomorrow because tomorrow is not promised for anyone. Because when death comes, you cannot repent. And you will have nothing but grief and sorrow. Inshallah, Jumu'ah, Ba'da Kada, when I turn 40. It's very important for us to remember. That because none of us, none of us wants to see a lot of evil in Yom al Qiyamah. If you ask anyone, what would you rather see in Yom al Qiyamah in the scroll of your good deeds? Evil deeds or good deeds? The answer is unanimous. I want to see nothing but good deeds. We'll get rid of the evil deeds and do a lot of good deeds while you can in this dunya. And repent today, tomorrow could be too late. <coughs> الحمد لله القائل في كتابه المبين وتوبوا إلى الله جميعا أيها المؤمنون لعلكم تفلحون أحمده إذ فتح لعباده باب التوبة ودعاهم إليها ووعدهم أن يتقبلها منهم ويمحو بها سيئاتهم وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له لا رب لنا سواه وأن أعبد إلا إياه وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد أيها المسلمون فإن التوبة ليست مجرة لفظ يتردد على اللسان من غير التزام بمدلولها Now Tawbah once again how important it is والحمد لله is not just a statement that runs on our, our lips without knowing what it means and acting upon that إن مدلول التوبة هو الرجوع من المعصية إلى الطاعة وذلك لا يكون إلا بتوفر شروط التوبة Now the real meaning of Tawbah is not just to say اللهم اغفر لنا اللهم اتوب علينا اللهم ارحمنا أبد لا We do that but, but the real meaning of it is that you have to give up sins change your life around any sins you're striving with struggling with any sins we are struggling with we should leave it alone immediately and fall on and seek help to get to, to, to get rid of it and turn back to obedience. Therefore, sincere tawbah and sincere repentance for it to be accepted by Allah has to fulfill certain condition. The first of few conditions that make the repentance of a person sound and therefore accept by Allah to give up the sin immediately. Don't say, inshallah, I will give it next week. Let me finish what I'm doing right now. And let somebody's drinking alcohol, and then somebody passed by and say, yeah, one, two, with Allah. Repent to Allah. Give up drinking alcohol is haram. They're like, jazakallahu khairan. Yes, we know the ayat. May Allah reward you. Barakallahu feek. May Allah give you genital for those for reminding us. The man left, they say, okay, we, we're making Tawbah after we finish these bottles, okay? We're not going to waste these bottles. Then you can't do that. You have to stop immediately. Don't worry about wasting. You wasting this great opportunity of Tawbah? Instead, you don't want to waste the haram Allah. Many used to should stop the sin and stay away from it 
and from anything that may lead to it. Why certain people they keep going back to sins? Because they hang out and are with the wrong people who could pull pulling them into the sin. ثانيا الندم على ارتكابه بأن يحزنه ويسوء ما وقع منه من المعصية ويستحم الرب. Number two, you have to feel that remorse and regret in your heart when you commit a sin. People, they don't just give up sin because they couldn't do it. Somebody is going to commit a fahisha and he got a, a flat tire. That's flat tire, man. You couldn't do it because of a flat tire. That's why you couldn't make it there. But if a person wants to be sincere, he has to regret, I'm not going to do this again. And he feel it. He says, SubhanAllah, Allah is so merciful to me. I'm do this in him. Naam. ثالثا أن يعزم عزما جازما على أن لا يعود إلى هذا الذنب مرة أخرى طول حياته. Number three that you have to have a full commitment, strong commitment that you're not gonna do it again at that moment, because you don't know what's gonna happen to you tomorrow. But at that moment, be sincere and be strong and say, I'm not gonna do it again. I said this is haram. I'm not gonna do it. But if after a couple of months, a couple of years, you feel weak again in Iman and do it, do it, do, do, do this Tawbah again. رابعاً وإذا كان الذنب الذي تاب منه يتعلق بحق المخلوق فلا بد أن يتحلل منه ويطلب منه المسامحة. Now, this first three is if you do something between you and Allah, you drink some alcohol, you didn't pray on time, or something, okay? Just something that you wrong yourself. Now, if the sin involves other people that you have wronged somebody else as related to one of their rights, whether it be wealth or blood or, or anything, or honor, then yes, you have to make these three conditions, and the fourth one that you have to make it up for them. Make sure that they pardon you. For example, someone borrowed money, but he didn't pay it for years. Now he attend the khutbah, mashallah, read the ayah, Somebody sent him a nice quote from the ulama, and he says, SubhanAllah, I, I oppressed this man who been nice to me. This man helped me out, took it from his own money, and I oppressed him. Then he go to him and say, I'm sorry, please forgive me. I, now I'm willing to give you your money. If he has it, he give it to him. If he doesn't have it, he said, please, give me some more time, I will give you the money. I'm so sorry. Likewise, whether he stole the money, he give it back. You, you, you're not paying the rent on, on time because whatever reason. You do not want to pay the rent, now you got to like make it up to that landlord. Likewise, if you have uh, damaged any property of others, then you have to make sure that you talk to them and find a way to make it up for them. If the people that you have wronged, Likewise, backbite and by your backbite, slander or beat them, cause them injury. You go to them, tell them please sorry. If you if you injured someone, tell them I'm sorry. What can I do? What can I do to make up from this sin? I was ignorant. Now, alhamdulillah, I listened to a sermon. I listened to this advice that was given to me. I have to make it up for you, and they they work some some commitments. But if they have uh, backbiting someone. And if they want to go to him and tell him and he may escalate to even a worse situation, don't say. Just make a lot of dua for them and mention them with khair. Likewise, if a person have borrowed money or have damaged some property or stole some property, stole it, and then now, alhamdulillah, they want to repent and the person could not find If they, if they could not find him, that person move out, then they can give sadaqah on his behalf. But if a person dead, Muslim, he was already dead. They go to his ears, the inheritors. Tell them, look, we have borrowed some money and we didn't pay it. There you go. Alhamdulillah. وذلك الأمر مهم جدا لأن وقد ورد في صحيح البخاري من حديث أبو هريرة أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال because this very serious, إخوان, because of this hadith in صحيح البخاري. Prophet said, من كانت عنده مظلمة لأخيه من عرضه أو من شيء فليتحلله منه اليوم قبل أن لا يكون درا ولا درهم إن كان له عمل صالح أخذ منه بقدر مظلمته وإن لم يكن له حسنات أخذ من سيئات صاحبه فحمل عليه في الحديث فيقدف في النار حديث المفلس Because the Prophet said, if anyone has wronged anyone in this dunya 
as right to his honor, slander them and talk bad about them, or anything from their wealth or the like, you should make it up for them today before tomorrow. Tomorrow matters are not going to be settled by gold or silver or money. Excuse me, Yom al Qiyamah. People are not going to accept that. On Yom al Qiyamah, matters will be settled according to good deeds and bad deeds. If any one of us that have wronged other people and didn't settle that problem in this dunya, on Yom al Qiyamah, those people we have wronged, we shall see them in Yom al Qiyamah. No doubt. No sorry will be accepted at that time. What happened? If you have good deeds, then they're going to take from your good deeds. If you run out of good deeds, you will take from their evil deeds and end up in the hellfire as he came in the other hadith, in Sayyid Muslim hadith and Muflis. Fattakullah, ibadullah, wa badiru bitawba qabla fawati awaniha. Al mawtu la yantadiruka hatta tastaqim ya abdullah, istaqim wa anta tadaliru mawt. Once again, it is very important for us to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while we can. A great advantage for us that we're still alive, we repent. Don't wait until death to repent. Death will come. But you know that's not the proper moment to make tawbah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. اللهم اغفر لنا وللمسلمين والمسلمات يا رب العالمين اللهم انصر المستضعفين في كل مكان في السودان وفي ليبيا وفي سوريا وفي فلسطين وفي غزة يا رب العالمين اللهم انصر المسلمين في كل مكان والمستضعفين اللهم ارحم موتاهم يا رب العالمين اللهم اشف مرضاهم اللهم اشف مرضاهم اللهم اجبر مصابهم يا رب العالمين اللهم عليك بالصهاين الغزاة الغاشمين ومن آزرهم وعاونهم من المتغطرسين يا رب العالمين اللهم إنهم لا يعجزونك اللهم لا إنهم لا يعجزونك اللهم خذهم أخذ العزيز المقتدر يا رب العالمين اللهم لا ترفع لهم راية ولا تحقق لهم غاية يا رب العالمين يا أرحم الراحمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد على آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما